So, first of all, happy birthday, Ben. And, and thank you so much for, for inviting me to, to launch The Party of Life, which is a, is a big book disguised as a small book. It's the, it is, in fact, the hardest of books. Um, the inside of uh, Beth Spencer's book is much, much bigger than the outside. And I speak as someone uh, with access to just over half the words in this book, about which more soon. As befits its title, uh, the party of life is also much bigger on the outside, existing in a warm social media space, uh, uh, which I think many of us have made our way through to get here. Typically of, of Beth, that space is billboarded by the generous uh, tributes she's paid to, all, to everyone who's helped with this book, uh, or may help even slightly at this late stage. And um, from the social media, we are in turn linked to points in electronic media, including uh, the, the, uh, the podcast Claudio uh, alluded to, uh, which is a really terrific, uh, best really terrific reading of the poem Forgetting. Uh, which um, I commend to you with the book in hand. Uh, additionally, there's this, that additional space uh, mapped out by the uh, Viscount Kit Kellen um, and Flying Island Books, to whom and which uh, Beth said will be raising a glass. Uh, when Beth... So I'll, only, I'll only speak now. Um, uh, when, when, when Beth asked me to launch the book, she did this with her customary modesty and, and diplomacy, uh, the request surrounded by disclaimers. But she also, she also attached the text. Um, so I was actually hypnotised into it before, uh, uh, by about halfway down page 12. Um, and that I should note that the text starts on page 10 and that page 11, other than three commas and a colon, is to me completely unreadable. Um, in the very first poem of this big little book, Beth manages to evo evoke an entire era with two words. Without helmets. <laughs> um, she gives us the totality of a, of a way of existing with three words for 80 cents. I have, I have a vague recollection of, um, of the instead of a suicide party, uh, about which there's a... Um, um, and I don't think I was there, but, but reading the poem, <laughs> the milieu seems so familiar. The, the particular mix of music, song after epochal song, us all in black, that ghoulish bride, that I, that I begin to recall the whole thing. <laughs> Who I may have spoken with. No, no, no. The, the details of the conversations. Um, hesitating about going to see Beth lying in state. Um, not that any of it's true, I'm sure. Um, did I know her well enough in those days to see her like that, not knowing what to do with my hands other than to, to hold drinks, which in this uh, possibly new memory um, I was gulping at much too frequently. <laughs> and not too much further into this book, um, Beth talks to me about it. She says, This is a backwards poem, an unreliable, selective memory poem. And, and the imagery is getting to be, sorry, all the best lines, or many of the best lines from, from this have already been said by the readers, so excuse the repetitions. Um, but the imagery is getting to me too. The, the shark-coloured water creaks against the bank. Mmm. Mmm. Like a $90 shrink. See, some, some, still funny the second time. Um, <laughs> here we are, rejected. Uh, confiding, confiding in the endlessly understanding bay. Best easy control over the rhythms of Australian English. I let myself get tipsy on two middies in the pub and yeah. Michael says you're a feminist but your sense of humour saves you. Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I could simply refer to, to half of this book. Uh, the left-hand pages. But there's something lovely about bilingual texts, uh, those that can be made out or at least sounded out, and those like this, which to me and possibly to some others in, in this room uh, uh, is, is visually beautiful, full of promise and of the questions of what is possible to carry over from one vernacular to another, a group of schoolgirls in shortened dresses 
setting the store detectives off like alarm bells as we passed. Um, so, oh, something Claudia, uh, Claudia did not mention in introducing me uh, was that I'm the author of um, Mistranslations from a Chinese Vase. Um, despite <laughs> failing to read completely the odd numbered pages, um, these pages which join the book to a converging path uh, through space time, um, I would like to read you those parts of the right hand pages which were accessible to me. Um, knowing from the left-hand pages just what those missing words carry. So this, I'm going to read you all the parts from the Chinese that I could understand. <laughs> Such that. Glee hmm? hmm? <laughs> point, black wattle, 90. Glee point, wheaties, huh? Huh? <laughs> 1900, huh? One, two, 100, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. 1972, A, such that, 500, such that, such that, B, huh? C, ha! Mm, huh? Ha! Mm, ha! 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 Wimmera, 2009, 27X, Steels Creek, huh? 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 Steels Creek, huh? Huh? One such that snap, huh? Huh? Crazy, Bobby Brady, five twenty-five, huh? Huh? Cuisinier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for your appreciation. <laughs> uh, and, and again, um, given the given the great pleasures of translation, I mean, I I really felt that. Um, that sense of being in dialogue with so much of this book, um, and including the including the translation bits with its um, so given the pleasures of translation with um, you know the gains and decay of, of implication and universal um, possibility with the text generous playfulness and availability, I'm pleased to pleased to provide this alternative, which is called um, multilingual machine mistranslation. So, one more misreading of this word, um, which goes like this. Sound. Red socks and Jane's wit. Once, Miss George McIntyre, sewing atheist work, hanging clothes, our dirty shoes, a blue-white T-shirt from T-shirt college, all brown female, according to the table, the following steps, wear $500, concluded Turak customers, as researchers worry about shopping. Yeah, I think that needs more work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and finally, everywhere, everywhere in this little book, um, there is love. In Beth's poems, uh, which the love in Beth's poems is, is always eccentric and sustaining. I loved the way they leaned in towards each other for stability, she writes, of a mother and her suckling calf. The rejected in love come down to sigh in the park at Glee Point. And love poem, which begins with fear, vomit, weeping, uh, Bobby Brady's donut and hairy armpits, really does resolve into love. I commend the party of life to you. Everyone here should walk out with several copies, which are ideal gifts for upcoming festivities, for loved ones, for your employees, uh, employers, employees and amanuenses. Uh, it's highly portable, richly evocative, impeccably observed and very, very moving. And it is with great pleasure that I declare Beth Spencer's The Party of Life. Oh.